This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And you've seen a whole lot of videos lately over the last four months or so about my many uh, exercises and my uh, experimentation and all the programming I've done around uh, the BitNet protocol, the NGE protocol between mainframes and all the various systems we have connected to it. I call it HNet, other people may call it differently, but a lot of people have started to call it HNet as well. And as you know, not only is it possible to connect mainframes to each other and send files and messages to each other, but I've also set up a relay server here, which has, I wouldn't say maybe at this point, 20, 25 or so services, uh, simple ones like, um, as you've seen before, for instance, uh, Corona, I can type here New York City, and it will give me the number of cases in New York City, the new number of cases, etc. Uh, in many cases, there's a simple scripts written in Bash to go get some information from the internet and present it back to the network job entry protocol and all the mainframes that are connected to it. Uh, you can see all the mainframes that are connected to it, or most of the ones that are, that are visible to me. If you go to moshix.dino.net, and you will see here there's a list of all the mainframes. We are, I want to say, about 60 mainframes. Some are IBM, some are uh, VMS, as you've seen in my last video where I connected a VMS machine. In the meantime, I've connected even more. And a whole bunch of them are um, IBM operating systems, VM370 of a lot of them, and also some real mainframes, such as the mainframe at the University of Leipzig, which is running ZVM 5.4, and some other mainframes. And, uh, and so today's video, we're going to see how to, con to connect MVS 3.8 to HNet. And the reason for that is not only, of course, I've ha I have an MVS uh, an MVS system connected to HNet, but I've received many messages, uh, even some phone calls and some emails about people saying things like, hey Moshix, you have all these videos about VMS and VM370 and uh, ZVM on your ZPDT IBM mainframe, and we have no videos out to get our beloved MVS 3.8 as delivered by TK4 to connect to HNet. How do we do that? Well, the reason is that there was no, there were no videos before is that it's extremely difficult. It's doable, but it's still difficult to do with the software that's included in MVS 3.8 as delivered by IBM back in the early 80s. Uh, there is a Jest 2, which is in theory capable of doing network job entry and therefore connecting to HNet, but there are so many issues with it and that it's really not, uh, it's really difficult to get it done. Some people have it done and I had an instance running, but it's not reliable. And the, op and the, and the amount of options and features that you have with NGE on uh, MVS 3.8 is very limited. However, a gentleman that I immensely respect, uh, one of the greatest programmers that we have today in the mainframe community, in, in the enthusiast mainframe community, is a gentleman called Bob Polmenter. And Bob Polmenter, he is the one, for instance, who wrote the patch that allows 24-bit uh, uh, operating systems such as VM370 and MVS 3.8 to run under 64-bit uh, uh, ZVM. And uh, he wrote also uh, this um, uh, he wrote some patches to Hercules that allowed to emulate um, IBM modem devices over TCP/IP. Well, I made a video, for instance, where he made some changes to VTAM that allows a terminal that's connected to MVS 3.8 running under VM 370 to disconnect from MVS and go back to the control on the control of VM 370, which is important for the host of mainframe that I have, for instance, in the cloud, where people get uh, free user accounts for. So Bob Polmunter wrote a patch. And if you go to github.com slash Moshix, you will see that I have a bunch of repositories, about 20 or so. And here is one that I recently created called ng38mbs. And what that is, this is all developed by Bob, and I wrote none of the code here. And I mean it with with respect, and I mean it with admiration for Bob and his genius. Uh, he wrote a series of programs that allow 
MVS to work perfectly under with NGE and connect to the our BitNet or HNet protocol. And he added also a lot of features so people can actually send messages to each other. So you, if you install the system, and that's what we're going to do in this video, uh, show how to get it installed and connect to uh, to each other. You will be able to participate, for instance, in our relay chat. You will be able to get all the various uh, relay uh, features. And for instance, um, you know the ones that I've seen sh shown here in this video. There are many of those. All those uh, functionalities and including sending each other files. All of that is doable with the patch developed by Bob Pullmanter. Here's his name here. And, and so, as I said, I contributed nothing other than working with him on testing and making sure that it works, eliminating some bugs, and working with him on the PDF, um, make sure that there were some simple things that I uh, contributed back to him. But all this work is from him. Bob is an amazing programmer, an amazing developer. He knows the mainframe inside out. And uh, what he achieved here single-handedly is just an amazing feet it's just unbelievable what is done here and not only is it is it amazing because of the way he'd done it uh, and the way he's delivering it but also because it just works and so if you follow what i'm going to do in this video you get you get your system up and running in about 25 30 minutes and i'm doing this video so we can do all the all the mistakes that i also did when i installed this the first time i think version 0 0.5 or so um maybe two three months ago and, and so avoid all the classic mistakes and see how to configure it right. And then I'll show you how to connect to, um, to HNet and to BitNet and start having fun with other mainframes in the network. So let's get it done. So once you go, go here, you download uh, the zip file. You see here, there's a zip file. Um, you download that and all these other files, these four files are just the contents of, of what's in the zip file itself except for the readme file, which is just a GitHub readme file. So there's three files, uh, the PDF job, which is the job to read the tape image in, and then the tape image. It's very, very simple. So you download that and bring it onto your Linux. I will show this only with Linux uh, for two reasons. One, it's, it's a little bit cumbersome for me to do this on Windows. I'm not very good with Windows. And number two, Linux just works. And uh, everybody has Linux nowadays. And if you have a um, a Raspberry, or if you have one of those free instances on Google Cloud, you can get a free instance on Google Cloud. Uh, those are fast enough and big enough for you to run what I'm going to do here. So um, I already downloaded it onto my desktop, and I have here somewhere the PDF with installation procedures, and then all the other files are downloaded here to my jump server at home. And I think what we can do, we can just make this bigger because that's all we're going to focus on right now. Let me make the, um, the font size. Oh, actually, I can connect with a better terminal. Mm, yeah. And let's make the appearance, the fonts. Let's make it 18 fonts. There you go. Okay, so I'm dying. This is my jump server here at home it's just a, a vm under vmware esx that's just always there and i have here uh somewhere the zip file which i just moved over here it is so it's here on my jump server and from here i connect now to my instance in the google cloud where i'm going to install this and uh, By the way, I know that a lot of people have asked what kind of keyboard do I use. Uh, they like the sound of it. I do too. That's the reason why I bought it. It's important to make the sound that you have a very hard surface. Um, I'm here in my home um, in, in the little corner where I make these videos. At home I have a marble, it's like a marble slab, and that's where I, I rest my keyboard on. And if you want to know um what uh, let me see here it's uh what keyboard it is it's this keyboard uh code keyboard and code yeah code keyboards code mechanical keyboard and i have the shorter version here there's a longer one i never use the number pad so um it's like this one 
yeah it's made by cherry mx blue uh, that's the one that i have that's exactly the one i'm typing on right now it has some features for lights etc i never even turned <laughs> i never even figured out how to do those because it's not important and they're probably more for windows but uh, the sound is what i like and when i press a key i know i pressed it because i hear it so um let's go back here and let's connect to my instance where we're going to install this we're going to put this on my I'm going to call this instance uh, HOUVM1 and I'm going to connect as root hmm. oh not computer compute okay should be in any moment now okay so now if we look here I have uh, this is the newer patch I already played around with an older one so what um what we'll do is i make a directory called ng100 move this into ng100 and then we unzip it all right so now the tape and the job is here that's all we need the pdf we really need because i have it on my desktop and that's where we're going to view it now now that we obtained that the other thing you will need to obtain of course is a hercules that is capable of emulating 2703 dial-up modems um, from the 80s and 70s under on top of tcp ip and uh, because that's how um, this those 24-bit operating systems they knew only to dial up because there were of course no tcp ip lines back there so that's how they talk to each other in bitnet for many years was based and for large parts of bitnet over 4,000 mainframes around the world they would dial up to each other very few of those had a least line to each other most were just dialing up and so when you sent the file to somebody you had to wait until that computer was uh, scheduled to dial up again to the other computer and deliver the contents so ibm 2703 modem um, there is a wiki page here okay oh, those were just modems big clunky modems that were attached to the mainframe and the mainframe had the drivers to deal with it so how do the standard hercules that we use um, as part of tk4 is not able to drive those uh, 2703 with tcp ip it sees the 2703 but it, it thinks it's a real modem it wants to dial up and expects a line to be attached to it so that doesn't work for that we need to get a a hercules that is capable of doing that so fortunately there is one uh, roger bowler the the original originator of hercules himself back 20 years ago uh, he makes he still maintains a version of hercules called spinhawk and in fact if you search for hercules emulator sooner or later you will arrive to this page here hercules minus 390.eu for european union and you see here he has a hercules third 3.13 which also is the one that installs if you do an apt uh, install from uh, Debian a recent Debian or Ubuntu and it also maintains Windows binary so those are fine you could also get this if you're on Windows however there's a problem that uh, these binaries are not compiled with the disk compression that Hercules that sorry that MVS 3.8 TK4 uses there is, those disks are compressed to make them smaller to download and unfortunately he doesn't have this compiled with the right libraries so you wouldn't be able to IPL MVS 3.8 TK4 with this binary so you really have to download the source and build it yourself either on Windows or on Linux so if you end up here and I'll put the link to this uh, GitHub repository in the description below this video so it's easy for you to find you have to get this and and you have to install it on your Linux or Windows computer and build it. So um, now that we have here our ng installed, I'll make um, spinhawk, make a directory here. Oh, I'll make here a spin2. And then I say git clone and then the repository of spinhawk. It does it just in a few seconds. Okay, and and now I have Spinhawk here installed. Now, as I said, I could go and start to build this already, but I miss the critical libraries to be able to read and write compressed 
files or compressed uh, uh, disk images of MVS 3.8 as delivered by TK4. And there is two libraries, Linux libraries, or, and they also exist for Windows, that allow you to compress and compress things on the fly with two um, protocols. One is zlib and the other one is bzlib. One is the one that you use for unzip, and the other one is the one you use for bunzip. So those two libraries need to be installed, otherwise you're not going to be able to IPL. So I'll also put in the description below this video um, where to find those. Uh, okay, if you just search on, let me close this. If you search on Google for Ivan and Zilib and Hyperion and Bzilib, you will end at this email. How do I compile Zilib and Bzilib 2? I've already shown this in previous videos on how to compile Hyperion. And so he talks here about two directories called Zilib, that's two packages, Zilib 1G minus dev, libbz2 minus dev. And those need to be installed. So you install it like this. If we go here, I will do apt install. They may already be installed on my machine because I usually almost automatically install those when I create a new instance. Yeah, this one is already installed. And then the next one is this one. You only need these two libraries. And I will put uh, the description of the name of these two libraries and the commands in the description below the video so you only have to copy and paste it into your Linux. Okay, yes, this is also already installed. So now we can just go in and build a Hercules that is able to drive 2703 modems so we can connect our MVS to HNet and BitNet. Let's go in there. We say autogen. Mm, why is that? Okay, the permission for this was wrong. Let's try again. Okay, so we did that and now I do configure and I'll put the sequences here for the commands also in the description below the videos. Autogen, configure, make, make, install. So now it's going to create the configuration file and what the configuration file does is it, all, it, it probes all the capabilities of the compiler and all the libraries installed in this instance of Linux. So that's it, it's done. And then I can just do make. And then this is gonna go and depending on the speed of your machine, make it maybe in a minute or two. On a Raspberry, it will take probably more like four minutes. On a very fast machine, I've sometimes got it done in about 10, 12 seconds, especially if you have uh, NVMe drives and uh, a very fast uh, processor like the AMD Threadripper. I recently bought this machine here, um, S System 76. Let me see. They have some desktops that you can get with uh, Threadripper. Yeah, this one's. I got one of this here. Uh, mine looks exactly like this. And I got it with uh, the Threadripper CPU. I got it with 256 gigabyte of memory, two CPUs, and then uh, I bought my own storage and put it in. So I got to about 26 terabytes of storage uh, with SSD and uh, spinning drives and some NVMEs. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's it, it got to about $3,400, something like that. But that's a machine that's going to last me now for the next four or five years. So I went and spent on it. It's unbelievably fast. I mean, it builds uh, Hercules in about 10 seconds or so, and it just flies by. I mean, what you see here, it just flies on uh, on that machine. So I'm uh, I'm happy I bought it. Uh, in you know, over over the last 30, 35 years, uh, every time I spent money on a computer, I always the moment after I regretted it. But in a way, um, computers and programming and IT have been very good to me in my life my professional life and everything I own and uh, call mine and I got, I earned through computers. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, if you if you have a more powerful computer, you will do more powerful things. It will be ahead of the curve and you keep, uh, you know, you keep uh, competitive. At least that's my theory or that's how I explain it to my own bank. 
So, um, so this is running. It's going to take a while. And um, okay, so that's just finished. And then once you did that, you do make install, and you install it. Uh, now I already did all that. It's already installed. So if I do Hercules, I already have Hercules, as you see, 13, and um, uh, that's the one we will need now to create uh, our first node on the on the HNet. So this works fine. Now, the other thing we need, of course, is a freshly downloaded uh, TK4. So let's make uh, a new TK4. For that, I will say, uh, make dear TK4 uh, YouTube. Okay, and now let's go get the, the link to TK4. So there will be MBS 3.8, TK4, ETH, that's the famous university where Albert Einstein was teaching after he came from Germany to Switzerland uh, just before the war. So um, we'll take update eight. Now I wanna say here a word about update eight. Update eight is already a few years old and it is widely anticipated and hoped for that Jürgen Winkelmann, the maintainer of this distribution of MVS, uh, will release update nine in the next, I wanna say three to six months, which means it will be released between June and September of 2020. Uh, we hoped that he would do that in the last two, three years, um, but he hasn't for various reasons. He's a very busy person, but that's also good because in the last three, four years since update eight, uh, a lot of additions have been made and, and, and enhancements to MVS 3.8, update eight. Algol was fixed, COBOL was fixed, XRF wasn't working on COBOL. Um, a, a lot of things were vastly enhanced. I've contributed some of those myself. And so update 9 is going to be a great, uh, a great new release. And I, I really think that the NG38 systems, subsystem as, uh, as that we're looking at right now in the video by Bob Polmenter is going to work unchanged in TK49. And the reason is that it really doesn't change anything. And one of the main reasons for that is that uh, the system, the NGE system developed by Bob Polman that we're installing here, does not use any of the subsystems such as JS2 or anything else. It is its own subsystem, its own system that is not dependent on any uh, scheduling software or anything on MBS 3.8. So I'm highly confident, 98%, 99% that it will work. If, it, if there is something slight, thing to change i'm sure that with bob will figure it out and we'll change it but uh, so this is for update 8 when update 9 comes out i'll be the first one to show you in a video that the same system developed by bob palmenter is going to work also in update 9 or if there is a change i will show you where to get the updated version but right now all we have is update 9 so we're going to get the um, copy link address here and i think that's it with the browser we won't need it anymore so I just say wget and let's get it. On the Google Cloud, the connection speed, of course, is amazing to the internet. The only thing I don't like about Google Cloud is, although the Google Cloud itself is based on IPv6, it doesn't offer IPv6 to the instances. I, I don't understand why they don't do that. So underneath this instance that we're working on right now, there is IPv6. Every All the IPv4 is emulated on top of if carried on top of IPv6, but they don't give us IPv6. So uh, we have it here. Now let's do an unzip. That was fast. And as you know, um, if we go down here, there is now a whole Hercules uh, section. That is the if you start Herc if you start the MBS from uh, fresh after fresh installation of uh, of TK4, it will actually take its own Hercules, it carries its own Hercules. But as I said, this Hercules is no good for us here in this case because it doesn't support 2703 or modem emulation over TCP IP. So usually I just chuck it. Uh, so it's not going to be there to bother and then we don't launch it by mistake. 
Um, the other thing that we need to do always is go to unattended, this director here, and change to console mode. We need that because we need to work with the tape device. So uh, by default, and I think that's a grievance, that, that's the only grievance I have to Jurgen is that he has to set it up so that by default it starts with it in daemon mode. And you can still interact with the console if you go over the web server, but the web server exposes some issues. You have to protect it. So um, I, I prefer it if it's in console mode and I don't expose anything. So set console mode. That's done. Okay, and now is the time that we start to look at the, at the documentation, what to do next. So let's start the PDF here in its simple, elegant beauty. Uh, 18th of March, today we have the 31st, so not that long ago. Introduction to NG provides a mechanism to bring network job entry tra data transmission to MBS 3.8. NGE38 can connect to other NG capable hosts where, where, where they are MBS, VM, or DOS. And in, I, in fact, also connected to Linux and to VAX and many, some other systems. And receive data files from those systems and send data to them. Provides connectivity to other systems via binary synchronous communications. Those are the 2703 modems. These lines are emulated in Hercules environment by the use of TCP NG device driver in Hercules, which we have now because we obtained SpinHawk. 3.13. So if you have any other Linux install, Hercules installed on your system, you, you will have to deal with, you know, this needs this particular Linux. You have to be very careful which one you're invoking. Um, NG38 does not provide an, a JES based uh, environment like that of later MBS releases. So ZOS, of course, can connect to NGE and is able to connect to. Uh, HNet and we have some instances of doing that through JS2. JS2 later JS2 releases are very capable of doing that. Um, but uh, Bob chose not to do that because the JS2 that we have in MVS 3.8 is very very limited when it comes to NGE. So of course NG38 implements the RSCS protocol that came with, with VM, uh, VM370 and then all later versions. And uh, NG capitalizes on the prior work to bring NG into MBS. A copy of Mr. Coughlin's modified NG RSCS line driver was brought over to MBS. So uh, maybe that's important to say. Peter Coughlin, an amazing uh, engineer himself and developer, he uh, created his own RSCS for VM370 so they could connect uh, to uh, BitNet and other systems. In fact, I think. The reason that we all here are connecting to HNet and have all these many mainframes connected to each other is because of Peter Coughlin's original work. Amazing person. He does all his development on MVS, uh, sorry, on VMS. So he, he runs Hercules on VMS. He has a real uh, VAX machine at home. And he's an amazing developer. And so Bob, what he did is he took the RSCS protocol and the line driver and brought it into MVS, made it work under MVS, and then built all the stuff around it. So it's still a Herculean effort, but uh, he based his work off uh, Peter Coughlin's amazing work. So uh, requirements. We need uh, an MVS 3.8, which we downloaded. We need a Hercules emulator able to do uh, NG over TCP IP, which we downloaded. Uh, we need another uh, NG capable operating system with which to connect. Um, so we will connect to one of my, uh, my one of my other systems. We need some st space on the disks, which we have because that comes standard with TK4. And we need to assume that the reader has knowledge of how to add device statements to the configuration file. Yeah, I know how to do that. So uh, we're installing NG for the first time, I guess, most of you. I've, of course, I've also had to do a procedure where I upgraded from a previous version every time there were bug fixes. Perform um, all the installation steps on the next page. So load the distribution tape to your system. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. We know that the AWS is the uh, distribution tape. So let's put this on the side. And we put it here. And then let's make this. I may have to reduce the uh, text size a little bit so that it will all fix. I go to 16. 
Okay, so now we'll all fix nice and dandy. So the first thing, of course, is we have to, um, let's go to conf and MVS, and I need to change some stuff. Um, the port, because I need special port to connect to. Okay, um, I'm gonna make this port 3290. I always eliminate the HTTP port because of security. And uh, time offset is gonna be uh, five hours, uh, uh, what is it? Six hours from uh, standard drainage time. And uh, later on, we'll have to add the device here for the modem, but we'll do this later, okay? So that is already done. So now we can just start NPS. And it's gonna come up. I have here already a terminal session that will want to connect to it. Let's say reconnect. Yes. So now we're connected to my Google instance. And since we're not starting this uh, with the Hercules that's built into TK4, we'll have to do something else. So we'll have to say Hercules conf uh, minus F the conf file. Okay. So now it read all the configuration files and we started this with the um, with the uh, Hercules 3.13. Very important. Started only with that one. And um, and so now, how do we IPL the system? Well, uh, you could read it in the TK4 manual, but I'm going to I'm going to tell you here. We're just going to do IPL 148, and then uh, it already the nucleus already started. That's the nucleus talking to us. Uh, specify system parameters. Just continue. R00, comma U. Okay, now it's coming up. So as soon as it's up, what we need to do is mount the um, mount the, the the tape that contains NG38. Let's reconnect here. Okay, so let's see how far the IPL has come. Okay, so JS2 is already up. So yeah, so now we can log in and see you later is the password, as you all know. And let's go create some JCL. Fortunately, the JCL here is already included um, in, uh, in this file here. So this job 00, that includes the JCL. So all we have to do is we can upload it with FTP or with uh, with um, terminal fi file upload. I'm just going to copy and paste it. So I have it here in my in my uh, and Windows Notepad. This amazing editor created by Microsoft. Shame on you. And we're going to say Herc um, test CNTL tape. So we put it in Herc01, test CNTL, whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put it there. Okay, so that's done. And we can just leave it here as it is. And I'll do a save. Now what we need to look at here, it tells us, author us, so we need to cut and paste the JCL within job 00 text in an appropriate editor, which we just did. Review the JCL for any changes. We want to put it in N38 sample, N38 sample, that's fine by me. We're going to change that if you want different names. Okay. You may change any data sets now. Submit the job to create the data, say, data sets uh, load on the tape. So let's run that. Now, when we run it, you should see here things speed up a little bit, get active, really active. Oh, and for that first, of course, we need to mount the tape. So we do dev init. 480 is the device of the tape drive. And we say uh, root NGE uh, 100. And uh, it's NGV 
NG38 V100 dot AWS. So basically the state image we just got in the zip file, which you downloaded from my GitHub repository. Remember we unzipped this just a few moments ago. That's the one. Um, so you just say dev init, that's the command. And this is not an MVS command, so we don't put a slash in front of it. We, this is a command to Hercules to the mount this tape. It's the sim, it's the exact same procedure uh, back in the old mainframe days, if you ever did that, taking a tape, going to a tape device, either one of the old reel, like the 3420s or the 3480s or 3490s, and putting the tape into the device and mounting it. And, and then you just say ready and nothing else, right? You, that's all we're doing here. Everything else is then later on done by my, by MBS itself. So, so we did that. We we put the tape into the device. That's all we did here. So now we can run this little job, and all the job does is it's an IB copy. It copies stuff from tape. Uh, NDD. That's the tape you can see here. Um, it does it three times and uh, copies it out into new data sets which are newly cataloged into the system. That's all we're doing. So keep a close eye here on this part here. You see the MIPS going up, the start IOs, and the CPU indicator will go up. So let's do this. Yeah, and it's already done. This is, this is blazing fast, obviously. So let's start 3.8. And we should see our job here. Yes, uh, return code zero, that's fine. And it allocated some data sets. So let's go make sure it really did. 3.4, N38, NG38, and there it is. Now, all the stuff that we need to complete uh, the installation is here, right? Um, all the jobs are here. So that went well. Let's move this for the, to the side. Now we need to authorize the ng load library. So we need to go to the sys1 parmlib. This sys1 parmlib is like in Linux slash etc, where you have the configuration of the whole system, or in Windows, I don't know, I guess the registry, uh, nobody knows really what it is, but um, so sys1.parmlib, can I spell? Okay, and there's a member here, which, which is called IEA, everything IEA is nucleus related, and APF is uh, authorized program um, library or a function where we authorize libraries to be kind of like root privilege or privilege on the system. And what Bob wants us to do here is to add a new library. Okay, um, we can put it here after this one. Insert. And of course, very important, don't forget to put to coma, because if you don't put to coma, it will not be able to get the other ones. And so next IPL, it, the IPL will fail. So this is the line, ng38.authlib space pub000 coma. This authorizes ng to be a privileged uh, subsystem. So we do that. Now we can shut down the system. And so we log off and we can disconnect. Okay, now we go here to the console and we say BSP pilot one shot fast um, with, a, uh, with a slash. Oh. Slash F BSP pilot shot fast. This will tell the autopilot that's installed, developed by Volker Bandke, to do a very fast shutdown of the system. Because now we have to go there and create the device in the Hercule, in the com file for MBS to be able to um, attach to the system to to the next system. And so at this point, you will need to know who you're going to attach your system to. If you want to, if you want to connect to one of my systems, please write me an email moshix at gmail.com and ask me to connect to me. I, all I ask is that you have a system 
that is up uh, is meant to be up 24 7 because when a system comes up and down all the time it's unpleasant and it creates lots of uh, error messages so if you have a system that that is running a machine that is always up not on a laptop or something like that that has a reasonably fixed IP when I say reasonably I mean an IP that doesn't change every day or every week or every month something that changes maybe only once or twice a year because once that changes again we'll have to go reconfigure both of us uh, our connections so if you have an IP that's pretty much fixed if you have a computer that's always up now you can write to me and uh, and connect to me or if you want to bring up two systems you can do that too and in fact the documentation shows you how to ses set up an MBS A and MBS B so that you can connect two machines to each other although there's not much fun in doing that because uh, well you know all the fun is being able to see all the other many mainframes that we have in the network so things are a little slow here the shutdown obviously it's always a bit slow let me help it I cancel everything uh, I stop TSO um, cancel TP cancel uh, F1 it's a, it's a little brute force and I know Professor René Ferland doesn't like to see that but um, sorry René but uh, and just it's just a it's not a production machine and then Znet quick to stop VTAM okay that went fast and at this time we can uh, stop CMD1 and we can also stop BSP pilot and now that we're done we're gonna say P just two term okay and that's a usual problem that many people have that just doesn't want to come down and that's because there's some lines which are still draining and that those are the lines controlled by the 3705 emulator that's provided with the TK4 and since we don't have in Spinhawk 33.13 but there is no 3705 emulator those lines are started but they can't really drain so it's okay we just do p just 2 event so we force it to event it really doesn't like that it complains a lot it says just 2 catastrophic error uh, it prints out the registers so how do we continue from here we say uh, reply to this to this question here with zero one purge let's purge the event the dump and that's it so now we do um, uh, zeod and twice and that's it Okay, so now that it's shut down, uh, we can now proceed to um, make the change in the configuration file for Hercules. So that's over here, and we'll have to put in a line that gives it access to uh, the 2703 device. And I advise we use uh, line address 90. So let's do that. Oh, let's first start screen. Call this machine MBS3. Okay. So uh, let's go to conf. And we edit the file called VATK, this one. So. And we go here somewhere and now we insert a new device I like to insert it right here so I see it from the beginning and we insert a line like this so in this case um, we're going to be we're saying there's a device called 90 the type is TCP NGE 2703 the note name is going to be HOUMBS3. The remote node is going to be Relay C. And I'm going to talk about Relay C in a moment. It's just the uh, it's just an implementation of NG on Linux on this machine. I have a video about it, how to do Linux NGE, um, just to make things simple. But it could be any remote host. It could be my machine or something. My local port is going to be, let's say, 2703, let's say, 04. 
and the remote port is going to be 175 that's the port of the other ng machine and in my case localhost is going to be the other node so it's the same machine if you connect to me then you need to have the ip address of my machine and then my port and then you tell me your port and your node name and i provide you my node name depending on where you're going to connect to in the in the network so if you remember we have this so depending where you're going to connect to me on which node i'm going to provide you that node name here for your remote node and the port and you give me your remote your node name and your local port obviously you need to make sure that it goes through firewalls it needs to go from the outside ip directly to this port uh, i need to be able to access it or whoever wants to access it if you set two mbs hosts on the same machine you can put in local host and then just have to be careful not to mix the local and remote uh, ports here but uh, obviously that's that's simple so we did that and let's open up the documentation again <coughs> So we now configured that and it says re-IPL your system to take for APF authorization to take effect. So let's do that. Hercules conf tk4. Okay. So now we can IPL again IPL 140. Um, the nucleus is already up. We tell it reply zero zero comma u okay it's not uh cap sensitive so you can all spell it in lowercase or uppercase or in mix as you want okay so let's go again to our terminal which has disconnected let's reconnect again there it is and now we'll continue all our work in the terminal so we can put it over here Let's see how IPL is progressing. Yeah, just two is already up. The BSP autopilot is here. Okay, that's all going well. Okay, so that's it. We're up and running. Oops. And we're logged in. So now we go to um, go 3.4 and we go to ng38 and we go to samplab okay this one ng38 samplab and now we have a bunch of jobs job 00 10 20 30 40 we will need usually 10 00 through 30 and we also will need to change the configuration file everything else is kind of less uh, less important for now so we now need to find the spool data set. So uh, you remember at the beginning of this video, I said that this is not using JS2 at all, which also means, of course, it's not using JS2 to receive and send data sets. They, they go through a spool file, which is with the NGE38 subsystem, controlled by the NGE38 subsystem itself. So we have your message class X, that's fine, 1A, and it wants to define, absolutely oh, sorry, uh, it tells us here to use um, where is it job 10 so sorry go to job 10 and it tells us here that's B message class X and it wants to define on pub 002 a vSAM data set which is going to be the spool data set obviously it's using vSAM for spooling which is the obviously the correct choice so that's which we can just run it as it is we don't need to do anything here it's going to define 50 cylinders, which is quite big. And now let's start 3.8. And we see here B oh, executed and zero return code. So that's fine. Now we allocated the spool data set. Now we need to format it according to the internal NGE38 requirements. So let's go back and let's take job 20. So we are now at step six format the spool data set. Okay, so we can only run the formatting if ng itself 38 is not active and we haven't started it yet, so that's fine. We can just, uh, that's C and that's uh, message class X, that's fine. And so let's run it. Job three, 
Let's go see how that went. Yeah, return code zero. The formatting is done. You can see here it formatted. So now we have um, add the ng started task procedure to system proc lib. Use member ng38 of the semp lib to define a started task procedure. Okay, so that's simple enough. We should have here job ng38, yes. Now we take this and copy as it is, the whole thing. And now we need to uh, create a new member in sysproclib, obviously. So again, let's take all of this. And we go here and we say sys1 proclib ng38. That's the member of the store procedure. Okay, sys1 proclib ng38. We're creating a new member. We put in what we copied over from the sample there. And all, it, all this does is it starts um, ngE. So we save that. and now that's done and and now we need to configure the system so to configure the system we go to 3.4 we go to the samplib as you can see here right now we have already the spool is there which we defined and now we change the configuration so in our case, we know we called HAU MBS3, and we connect to a host called Relay C, line 90. If you remember from the config file we just uh, created, and um, now we would uh, start to add all the routing. So. Um, So we say, for instance, um, relay B goes through relay C, and then we say relay goes through relay C, and we can start to add my other members. So we can say mushix4 relay C. And whatever other you can, you know, you would take here basically the whole routing table from here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's fix this all up. I will add all of those and then come back to you. So the other thing here is we want to authorize users on other nodes that we recognize. So I'll put in uh, this and of course also for me in my case, Moshix4. Okay, so we put in a, a simple routing table. Uh, host relay B can be accessed through relay C. Relay can be accessed through relay C. And Moshix can be accessed through relay C. So that's it, that's a routing table. We save it. If you need to pause here the video and see how I do the routing table, uh, this is a good time now to do it. We have here, we call ourselves H-O-U-N-V-S-3. The link is called Relay C on line 90. That's the modem and uh, the routes of several hosts that we want to be able to reach. So, and then of course you would add as many as you need. And now we will run uh, job 30. Um, to create the routing table. Add, the, add assemble and link. The routing table is assembled from this macros. So we can now run this. Job number four, start 3.8. And that went over fine. So now we have a very basic configuration. And the next step now will be to start um, the link and see if we can connect. We don't need this for now. 
So now we can go to my underlying uh, Linux NGE machine here. It's the same server. And if you see that I have defined a link to my HOUMBS3 here, this stanza here, which says it's the local host, port 2704. So we start this connection. Okay, that's already started. And now we can go back to our MBS and go to the console and say start ng38. And if we're lucky, pretty soon they should be connecting. Yeah, and they already connected. Sign on of link relay C complete. So now we have a connection. And now I can start to do things like NGE38 command relay C QSYS. And I should at some point get it. Well, actually, sorry, ng38 command relay c qsys, which is in a typical ng command. And I should, yes, and now I got back the response from the underlying Linux here saying, these are my connection HOUMBS1 and HOUMBS3. It also has a connection to relay B. So now what I can try to do is I can tell it uh, NGE38 command relay B QSYS. So it's, now it's going one hop further. Now it needs to go first to relay C. From relay C, it forwards the command to relay B, and relay B will answer then at some point. Yes, and here it is. So now we should be able, if we, so if you bring up the other terminal session from the beginning of this video, uh, I think that's this one, yep. So this is Moshix 4. And so now I can just say a, a special message to RCS, a route um, HOUMBS3 to relay B. And now it tells me note HOUMBS3 routed through primary link relay B. And I am connected to relay B here. Um, as you can see here, this is a connection, one of the connections I have. So now I should be able to say, um, tell herc01 at HOUMBS3 hello from ZPDT. And this should show up at some point. It's obviously going to take a few seconds. This is all protocols emulated on top of TCP IP. And um, yeah, here it is. So. So this machine sent now, to, and they're completely different hosts. They're on different machines, even on different parts of the US. Hello from ZPDT. So now I can also say um, NGE38 message um, Moshix4 mained hello back to you from MVS3.8 from 1982. And let's see if we get this uh, notification here as well. Yes. So hello back to you from MVS Relay from 1982. Now I can also ping that machine. I can say, tell me what's going on in that machine. What is it running? and uh, it will tell me what kind of operating system is running on that machine and so again it goes from here to relay b from relay b goes for relay to relay c from relay c goes to mbs here and then it's going to get a response back again to relay c to relay b from relay b back to yeah and so here it is so it's telling us these are all the jobs running and you recognize all of those those are jess 2 some initiators this is vtam the 3705 controller mf1 tso and that's us here. And now we can also send it file. I can say send file relay exec A or any, I can say and queen, and queen exec A to herc on at uh, HOUMBS3. And now it's being sent and the file is received in EPSIDIC without any conversion whatsoever. Uh, finally, um, we can also do something else, right? We can now, yeah, we received the file, as you can see, the file is received and it's now in this pool. 
Now, if you want to add now a one more host, we can do something like ng, well, actually we should already have added it. Let's see if we can do get the same output like here. So if I do here relay, um, uh, relay Texas will tell me what is these, what's going on with Corona in Texas for right now, 2,906 cases plus 98. So let's see if we can get that same response here. ng38 command relay um, Texas. So now it's sending the command Texas to relay. And let's see if we get any response back. The only thing that is different between ZVM and, and MVS is here we have to press enter to see if there's any new messages, just because TSO is written this way. In ZVM, the messages come up on their own. But uh, yeah, so here it is. So you can see exact same response. Um, I can also say uh, NGE38 command relay um, chat log on. And so now I'm able to log on to the chat system. So let me log in here as well. So I'm here logged into the chat. And we should be logged on pretty soon. Oh, unknown command. So, oh, it's different actually. NGE38 message, sorry, relay, log on. So we need to send it a message because that's a message. What is it? NG38 M relay root because it's the root user there. And if it logs on, we should also see here because all new logged on users are announced. Yes. So Herc at Herc01 at HOUMBS3 has joined as the prophecy foretold. So now we should get the message. Yes. Welcome to Relay Chat 200. So now this TSO machine, this MVS machine 3.8 from back in 1982, has now received a new subsystem which allows it to send files, receive files, get messages, send messages, and participate in in the uh, HNet uh, system like every other node. So one more thing, command relay moon, it should send me the current moon phase here. Let's see what we get. And again, it takes a little while. It will come soon. Here it is. So we got the moon phase. It's half moon right now. So that all works. And again, anytime we need to make changes to the routing table, we just go back. We go to 3.4 ng, go to the sample, change the config, and add all the other nodes we need to reach. So you need to do this by hand. Um, you can look up the routing table basically from the graph on my website here, the one that I mentioned here. And if you see here, you can see exactly who's linked to who. And I update quite frequently anytime there's a new node, and that all works fine. So we've connected these two machines, and now this will keep on running forever. Nothing is going to kill this. It's very, very stable. And we can now participate in the full HNet uh, uh, network. So before we close, I want to repeat all the steps again so that everybody can follow exactly. Uh, I guess I'll do that on Notepad. Let's do a new. And can we make this font very big? like 24 bold. Okay, so for step number one, you need to obtain Hercules Spinhawk 3.13. And you see where to get it from, link below 
this video you're watching okay now the second one is you need to add the zilib and the bzip2 libraries again link below this video it's apt update and then zilib etc so if you're on centos and red hat you will do yum install and then the same thing number three we'll have to of course get get mds 8 tk4 from the eth university you can google that easily then step number four is build hercules with you go into the directory and do autogen.sh obviously uh, configure make and make install then you need to get the nge38 zip from github noshix and the link again is below video number six you unzip nga38 um, start mbs8 but first enable console in unattended okay set console mode then start watching video and do as Moshex does that's pretty much it you will need the following also if you want to connect to somebody other than yourself you will need uh, to connect to other folks you will need their IP fixed IP needs to be accessible from internet obviously then the port of their machine their node name okay so once you have these three things you provide them the same three things okay and that's how you could connect so it's a very simple peer-to-peer -peer. make this a little bit smaller so that it's easy to see maybe make this 20 okay so now we have it get hercules get those libraries get mbs go into the hercules library you just obtained from github do those commands get ng from also from github from my repository unzip it uh, start set MBS into console mode before you start it then start watching the video and do exactly as I did you will need these three things from the other people you will need to provide the same three things to the other folks so they can open up connection to you once you have that uh, just know that you know for fun send commands command uh, help to node relay so something like this NGE 38 from TSO screen from TSO ng38 command relay help so this is pretty much it it's really not that hard it works reliably each time if you have any problems then you can always send me messages or post below this video if you want to connect with me then also connect with me and uh, ask me to con you know to provide you the details these three details here right uh, if you want to do it just between two of your mainframes you also can do that so you never have to ftp or uh, do a terminal file transfer back and forth we just send it back and forth between your machines and that's how we all been doing it in the in the uh, uh, community here where is it um, here 
That's how we all exchange files very busily. I have had uh, just in the last 30 days, I think over 190 people connecting to this relay um, host here, sending commands and getting results back. And uh, about 190 people have been chatting. All these machines, uh, they all can see each other, they can all talk to each other, and they do. And it's a lot of fun. And see here, you have just some of the um, some of the commands you can provide to relay. This is also updated. This is some of the new nodes just in the last few weeks, and uh, and in the future video, I'll uh, I just recently acquired a mainframe, a real mainframe, a hardware mainframe, an IBM mainframe, and um, and I'll also show how uh, we get uh, everything running there on the real hardware, on the real. Uh, but it's very very similar. I mean, it's just uh, small things to change, but other than that. It's exactly the same procedure. So you can see IBM here a lot. I have some Linux machines. Um, this Relay C is not even here yet. I also have Relay, which runs Synonomini's amazing uh, NGE program, which is extremely fast, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, MBS machines. I've added some new ones just in the last few days. Uh, Zilpa and Bilia. These two machines were just added just a few days ago. And uh, I don't have a line there yet because I had not connected them yet, but now they're connected. And, um, and so that's it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. If you can join us, please come in. The water is nice and we're having a lot of fun. And there's uh, a lot of good people and you will see that uh, it's an addictive thing. So any questions you have about all this, uh, any mistakes I made, I hope I didn't because it, it works. But uh, you can always post in the comments below this video. I hope to see you on HNET soon. And, and goodbye.